that's awesome. actually not sure if my mic is live on this screen because I'm starting something new but uh, I see people in the chat so I wanted to say hi all right then the mic is live hello Jane Neander welcome to the stream if you can't tell I am doing um, using new software here, so. Hey, Underpoe. Hey, Kimmy. Hey, Kimmy. Now, that's weird. Three people have said hi, but it shows me as one viewer in the chat. Am I not supposed to, am I not supposed to trust you? New software? So I'm calling it new software, because I'm really good at naming things, as you will see. So good at naming things. All right, I'm just gonna pull chat up on my lap on my iPad. Hey, Billy boy. Do not trust the machine; it lies. All right. All right. Hello. This is. I should be writing five twenty-four. I think you think I'd remember to write that down. I'll write that down here. Um, My name is Mer Lafferty, and I am doing something that's probably a very bad idea. But you know how they always say you should do something that uh, is scares you? I'm doing something that scares me. Um, hey, Whirling Nerdish. Hey, Ansela. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, OK Cunning. Good to see you guys. So yeah, I have, um, hey, Primalina. Hey, Phoebe. Uh, yeah, so the setup is I had a crappy webcam, which is this one, and that's the one that couldn't handle the chroma key, so I got a better webcam, and now I'm like, oh, now I can do the whole top-down thing, so I messed around a little bit yesterday to get the top-down thing. It still looks a little uh, blurry to me, and I'm not sure how to fix that, unfortunately. So that's not great. And of course, if I take it further back, then it's uh, then it's going to be further back, and you won't be able to see the words as well. Can you guys read that? Can you read what I have here? It may just be the webcam resolution. True, and I really can't do a lot about that. I don't think I think it's up as high as it can go. Uh, let me check. Live changing the video. It is legible. Okay, good. I'm checking the... Yep, 
That's worse. Okay. I feel like I'm an eye doctor. Is that better or worse? One or two? Anyway, how is everybody doing? How's your Tuesday? Mine's going fairly well. Okay, a little blurry. Apologies for that. But yes, I am doing the scary thing because not only am I um, going to be outlining a book live, I am outlining a book that is not written, not, well, not, not written, obviously, but it's a book that's not contracted, and I don't know if anybody's going to want it. So, uh, getting off to a very slow start. Sorry, K. Kimmy. Hey, hey, Jay Rambos. Um, so yeah, as I sat down to do my test outline this morning, I realized I wanted to expand uh, the idea of six weeks too. Now, I've tried to redact some things if you still intend on reading six weeks and don't want to be spoiled. But this will spoil six weeks a little bit. And it's probably going to spoil a little bit of two, although, you know, these are all broad outline things. So if, like, Harry defeats Voldemort is a spoiler for book seven of Harry Potter, then sorry, but that's not Shouldn't be too much of a shock. It's how you get there. That's the exciting part. Uh, hey, Vale who fights cats. Tired. Brain doesn't want to turn on today. I'm sorry to hear that. Inspi be inspired by my productivity. Okay, so. Um, here's something I don't know will work or not. Nope. So I'm not going to... I'm not going to muddle with it. I had... Um, the snowflake method up on another browser, but I didn't set the software to grab that browser, so I'm not going to worry about that. If you want to Google snowflake method, you will get right to the page I was working from this morning. So, um, I have it on my... This is my first time doing anything like this, the top-down or the live creation online, so I appreciate your patience, because I'm Still kind of flailing about. So the idea of the snowflake method is it's a it's a fractal. So you come up with an idea and then you build on it and then you build on that and then you build on that. So when you started with like one little bitty thing, you grow outward to be this big exciting story. And he's suggesting take an hour for every step and well I've already done some of the steps and I think that would be very boring for a podcast. So if it takes you an hour to do any of these uh, steps, that's cool. That's fine. You may not be, you may not be, uh, as comfortable with, with outlining, or you may not have a full idea of what your book's about. Hey, Christian Writing, I heard that spoilers can make you enjoy stories more because you know what details to look for along the way. You know, I think I've, I've heard that too. Um... So the 10 steps are designed for the, um, for the snowflake method. A uh, little bit of a, a detail, I wrote a short story to bridge six weeks and this book. And then I was trying to figure out how to incorporate, I might do the whole Anne McCaffrey thing and just make that, edit the short story to be like the first two chapters of the book or something. So there's also a little bit of a spoiler if you intend on getting the Escape Pod anniversary book because that's in there. So, um, this, this idea came actually from a producer that eventually was not able to take the rights to Six Wakes, but we had a call and he was saying that, you know, one thing that happened in, that didn't happen in Six Wakes that happens in, you know, most movies and that this is one thing he would want to change and that's the bad guy doesn't get hers in the end and I'd never thought of it that way because with six wakes you're doing the antagonist I guess is technically the manipulations of somebody years ago and 
But there is somebody responsible for it, and she's not on the ship. So we were actually thinking, how would he end the book? And we came up with the idea of com- of of beaming some of the people, beaming their data back to Earth. So taking a mind map, taking the DNA information of the clones and just beaming it back to Earth and they hunt down. And the idea is they're going to hunt down the person in, in char- involved. And then as I was, uh, I really liked that idea. But I also came up with, um, it's, I kind of don't want to follow, I mean, Six Weeks is a blatant murder mystery. It's a murder mystery. It happens to be in space. So I couldn't really do a follow a murder mystery with like a hunting book. So I was trying to think of a murder mystery and then I thought, well, the murder of all the clones, all the clones, because somebody has put a virus into the world databases. So all of the files are getting corrupted. So that is the quote unquote murder happening, which is all the files on earth are getting corrupted. And our heroes have beamed back to um, the uh, spaceship that houses the space station that houses all of the oldest clones. So, my concept is the first thing you need to do is come up with a one sentence summary of your novel, and that took a while to get down to 15 words. So, um, I know right now I'll show you the crap, and then I'll show you what I eventually. Uh, came up with, which is uh, two possible titles, Primitive Roots and The Most Dangerous Game. And as you can see, I crossed out a lot. Oh, camera is not handling this well. Okay, I don't know if you guys can read that, but I will write it legibly here. So what I finally boiled it down to is, while hunting their killer... Clones must, a lot of stuff crossed out, join her to fight an older threat. So in the short story that I mentioned, um, the clones have figured out how to send their data to the space station and uh, send a request to be, uh, you know, uploaded and vatted and all that to, to get a new body. And unbeknownst to them, there was also another clone in that lab, and that was of their uh, killer. And so now we have the characters all in the same room together, and... They're the oldest clones on the station. And so now I have to think about uh, the next step. It's really hard not to sit there and talk about the book when I realize I'm trying to outline it here. So, hopefully by the time I get to the third outline, this will be old hat and we'll get it. So, uh, I, I cut this down. I cut a lot of adverbs out and and, you know, My first four words were on a journey to exact revenge. That was the first six words. And I turned that, turned that into while hunting. So the, the one sentence summary is supposed to be as concise as possible. There are no names. There's no antagonist, protagonist. It's just basically main conflict. Maybe, um, maybe a setting. I don't know. If I want to keep it to 15 words, I have to figure out how to put a space station in here and take something else out. But I don't think adding a space station would harm it too much. So then, um, the rules for this are shorter is better. Character names tie together the big picture and the personal picture. Which character has the most to lose in this story? Now tell me what he or she wants to win. I think that does that. They want to win hunting their killer, but they get put in an ethical problem and have to fight somebody new. Um, so then, that's one hour. 
So then we have step two. Take another hour and expand that sentence to a full paragraph describing the story setup, major disasters, and ending of the novel. This is this analog. This is the analog of the second stage of the snowflake. So he likes to consider it three disasters plus an ending. I found this one rough. This one was kind of, of difficult for me because um, I really wanted to put exposition and characters in there and I found myself not being able to figure out what the disasters were or how the book would end and that is the next step. So I'm going to try to edit this down now. So we have three clones from Lost Ship Dormire. My handwriting's terrible. This is very difficult for me to write slow. But I'm doing it for you. It's always a hard one for you, Will, for exactly the same reasons. Thank you for understanding, Under Pope. Return to Hunt Down. The woman... who tried to commit mass murder. So then the, I suppose the next, the next sentence is actually supposed to be disaster one. So glad you're doing... Oh, good! I'm glad you're doing this. I'm sitting here in the back of my head going, this is so boring. Oh, crap. It's boring. Okay. Um, so this is... Now I have to figure out the first disaster. Disaster one is uh, the old clones... The person who helps them is actually a human working aboard the station. And the clones who live aboard the space station have not allowed this to happen. But... They have turned into two groups, a hedonistic and a nihilistic sort of ends. The hedonistic is building this great big, like, reserve. And if you've read The Most Dangerous Game, you can probably tell what's happening next. Where they're basically wanting to bring humans up there and hunt, have them hunted. And then if the humans survive, then they can have anything they want. Because the oldest clones in the world are the most wealthy and powerful. So, I suppose their goal, their, the clone's goal was just to get to the spaceship, appeal for help, and then get a shuttle down to, shuttle down to Earth. But, Disaster One, I should put that on its own line. They are captured. with the murderer thrown into animal reserve. Yeah, they've been shipping tigers and all sorts of stuff up there to recreate a uh, big, lush area. Um, so, yeah, I'll get to that later. Sorry, I'm trying to think of. So, they're thrown in there. They have to go through the, do we trust you? Do we work together? I'm going to have to watch some Lost in Space to get this. Get that mindset, I should say. Disaster 2. What did I come up with? Disaster 2, actually, I put a question mark. And then, um... Yeah, Disaster 2 is the hard one. Actually, you know, we've talked about the book, the, the middle of a book and the, di and the difficulties. Um, but Disaster 2 being somehow working very hard to get out of the reserve to find any clones on board who might be, um, who might be sympathetic and appeal to them for help. The way I write it probably will not go to that. 
because once I, once I start writing actually exciting, interesting things happening inside the reserve, it may not lead to this disaster. Uh, let's see. A seat. And why did I miss much of the stream so far? Um, I am mapping out Six Wakes, the sequel, which has no contract and no buyer, and using the snowflake method. Step one is come up with an idea for like a one sentence, 15 words or less idea for your book. And now we're coming up with the paragraph to describe the book, which has an opening sentence, three disasters, and a closing sentence. Now, I'm a pantser. And so, as we get further and further into the book, it's, like, so fuzzy and vague to me. But this is what I'm thinking of. So, um, they escape the reserve. To find clones of... other faction. I have not named these factions, and I haven't named any characters who are on the station yet. I'm mainly thinking about my main characters uh, who've already been established in the first book. Um, they escape the reserve to find clones of other faction, but they won't help. Not really disastrous, but I suppose... You can get your hopes up for a big thing and then get a big fat no after you work hard. Like I said, it probably will not come to that. Um, disaster three. I'm thinking one of our clones will be killed. Remaining characters horrified and despondent. Could had to think about how to how to spell despondent. E N T. Um so the the one thing here is if you're not familiar with Six Wakes, there are considerable rules regarding the um the experience of clones, the, the, whether clones, the existence of clones, that's the word I'm looking for. And one of them is you're not allowed to have a second clone of yourself. You only are cloned after you die. And so the characters of Six Wakes have already broken the law by sending their selves back to Earth because now there are two of those characters. On the other hand, legally, the ones that arrive there um, are now the legal clones, but the ones back on the ship, not really worried about the laws on Earth. But another thing is, they arrived and they have not made any uh, copies of themselves. And it's possible that they are living... These clones are disposable. They know that they are living elsewhere and they're there for one job and that is to catch this woman. Bring her to justice or kill her or something. And the mindset is going to be a little bit harder and more cutthroat than in Six Wakes because they know what's going on and they know what their goal is. And I think searching for their own humanity as a self is going to be a major theme. So, again, kill a clone, you just wake up a new one, but not in this case. So, uh, clone death is going to be much bigger. Wait a minute. Sorry, I just got a sad... Damn it. Sorry, 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 sorry. Should not have looked at an email even though it startled me. Um, so, Disaster 3, clone... Again, we're getting more and more vague in my head. I, 
have an idea who's killed, but I'm not sure. Um, that's the Dark Knight of the Soul thing, where you, you start establishing one as a leader, and then they fall. What do you do? Um, there's probably going to be the Great, Great Betrayal. That everyone sees coming, but since you don't know when, it's still going to startle you. Well, the characters. You'll probably see it coming about two-thirds through the book. The Great Betrayal. And the end... I don't know. I really don't. So, uh, does that say Final Battle? Where? Man, this looks awful. I'm so sorry, guys. Do not know how to make it. Maybe I should have put the good camera here and the crappy camera looking at me. If I get away from... Oh, that's neat. Hello. See, that was what I was afraid of would happen. It still doesn't look like it's... It's... Uh... It still doesn't look like it's... It's handling things any better. Um, alright, next page I'm gonna write larger. And we'll... Thank you, Livic. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really sorry, guys. I thought this would be better. I'm gonna write larger and hopefully fix it for the next one. So, this reads, Three clones from the lost ship Dormeyer returned to hunt down the woman who tried to commit mass murder. Disaster 1, they are captured with the murderer and thrown into the animal reserve. Disaster 2, escape the reserve to find clones of the other faction, but they won't help. Disaster 3, there's a clone killed in the final battle, characters horrified and despondent, and probably the Great Betrayal as well. Um, and now the final, the final thing is supposed to be, um... Yeah, this already does not seem like enough stakes are raised, but... Pantser, I can't... It's really hard for me to come up with these things at the very beginning. So, um... Then the final thing is just... Yay, we won! And then... But really, it's, uh... Survivors go to Earth. To save clones. So what's interesting here that I'm struggling with is the murder mystery part. I haven't mentioned it at all. And that could conceivably be a weakness here. The murder mystery is the fact that if you wonder what the murderer is doing on the station is she is coming to tell to help them she is coming to ask them for help because they have uncorrupted databases and she thinks that she can get something fixed computer hand wavy stuff only thing is she is the one of the oldest and the most powerful clone on earth but they hate her they hate her in the space station something big happened way, way in the past, and they're just like, no. So they won't let her be part of the the oldest clone club, and, uh, which is why she's thrown in with the other clones to the reserve, because they, they hate her and want to see her hunted. So, the question is, who is, um... Our three main clones from the Dormire can't be suspects. The hacker may be able to, but I have to bring in other suspects. I have to bring in, there's the human who helped them uh, get their bodies back. There's um, Sally from Earth. So I'm, I'm, I need like at least four or five suspects. Um, 
But I kind of see that as coming into... All right, since this has not been done before by me, I'm going to do something else weird. I'm going to give you this story from the point of view of the mass murderer because her story is the murder mystery. So I'm going to try this again. I'm sorry I'm doing this on the fly, but um, still terrible at titles. So going to say uh, murder clone book two. Good to see you, Phoebe. Thanks for dropping by. So, uh, we got two. Put that there. Experimental, yay! So we got Murder Clone Book 2. Yeah, when inspiration strikes, I guess so. So now we have, um, while trying to solve a murder... prevent clone extinction because that's really what the virus is doing if they can't print new bodies yeah oh yeah it's not not clean and easy not not clean and easy <laughs> while trying to prevent clone extinction A clone fails to appeal to powerful, I don't want to say clone again, too many clones, individuals. I don't think I spelled that right. Indiv id an I. Okay. It still doesn't say she has to figure out the Yeah, it still can't see it. Damn it. Uh while trying to prevent clone extinction, a clone uh Fails to appeal to powerful individuals having to find a murderer and survive their whims. I said I was going to write larger and I didn't. So, now, if she is the main character, we have, uh, I'm, the setup is the same. I'm going to say Disaster 1. Um... Same, same disaster, because her plan to investigate and ask for help just goes completely awry when she's thrown in with these people she thought would never bother her again. Um, the lion's den is metaphorical, but not too much so. So, disaster one, thrown into lion's den. So, disaster two, where I have them trying to appeal to uh, getting out of the reserve and trying to appeal to the second clone faction and failing. I don't know. See, this is, this is why it's challenging for me to keep this a murder mystery, except that the person trying to solve the murder is... a bad guy, not the antagonist, but yeah, are they clone lions? I don't think so. I can read this and I'm on the mobile at the ATM. Okay, that's great at the moment. Um, oh, hey, thanks for dropping by, Cheryl. So yeah, this is uh, let's kill a suspect. Who the suspect is, I don't know. It's 
So one major suspect dies, which means more killing and um, more uh, uh, more killing and the murder murder still not found. Yes, yes, there. Uh, it's a sequel to Six Weeks where they're all cloned as lions. Exactly. That's a great idea. Let's do that one. Okay, so while I was... Talk amongst yourselves. I had a thought. I know what's missing. What's missing is not the murder mystery itself, but the impending doom of a murder mystery. The impending doom of a murder mystery is different than the impending doom of being on a reservation. And, and reserve, excuse me. I apologize for that slip. That was not right. Uh, the animal reserve being in there, that is just like adventure death. People still got to be murdered. And so... As they get closer to figuring out so they figure out no not major once major suspect dies um, when they try to when they finally see the code murder code suspects appear and someone dies boy this is hard mm. and Put the whole, would you guys stop with the lions? <laughs> you don't have to stop with the lions. It's amusing. Oh, boy. Water break. Uh, see? This is why I don't outline. Because I'm like, well, I think when they get close to see the murder co cl uh, code. Close to see murder code suspect appears and someone dies is you the point usually the point where I pour myself some whiskey yeah yeah it's uh I I usually don't drink while I write but I usually at this point usually plan the evening's drink ahead of time <laughs> crap so we're at disaster three um, what happened over here? We had a major character die, and people horrified and despondent, but it's funny, I got a, a the thing about murder mysteries is when you when you talk about the third thing that happens, it's like someone else dies, or power goes out and someone else dies. Um, the reserve gets opened. I was gonna have that happen. Opened. People die. And luckily, neatly, I'm planning one person to be behind all the murders, so it doesn't get messy. Although sometimes when there is one, more than one murderer, that, that pro provides a twist. But anyway, as you can see, I'm very bad at outlining. I'm trying to get better. And by working this through out loud and forcing myself to work it through out loud because a camera is on me, I'll t I, I am forced to do it. Um, the lions are free. <laughs> Yes, the lions are free. Um, okay, doing back, going back to the chat. Uh, I have an outline, but it's, as I start writing it, I question it heavily. 
See, um, me too. And that's the problem. When I see... Then a battle happens... Or even a battle happens where our hero loses a hand. It's just reading that doesn't evoke any emotion in me. Whereas as I'm getting into the emotion of a scene, knowing that something, like, as it evolves organically into hero getting hand chopped off, that's emotional. So I look at this stuff written down, and while I'm supposed to feel like there, there's so much emotion and plot tied into this. You know, there's like 20, 30,000 words in this sentence. Um, when I sit down, I'm just like, don't know the lion's dead. That's, that's dumb. Why, why would I write that? It's, so it's hard for me to get a really solid emotional tie. It's hard to make emotional ties to an outline. I think I just realized that. I'm gonna have to unpack that. I'm gonna write that down. Hard to get. This is for me, not you, which is why it's in Scribble, and I can probably read it. So, wow, that whole step two. That was just step two. And, um,. Wow, that was a lot harder than I expected it to be, even though I did it beforehand. Whew. Okay. Now we get to a character. Step three is uh, need something similar to the storylines of every character. I am not going to do every character. I'm going to do one character. I'm not going to do every character because we have... A time limit and there's more um, I just don't want to go through all that right now call me lazy call me a pantser because that's what I am I'm looking down at the um, the snowflake uh, page if you're wondering so step three we have the character's name we're gonna do Maria coming from the starship Dormire so you need something similar, and for each of the major characters you need uh, one sentence summary of the character's storyline, character's motivation, character's goal, character's conflict, epiphany, and one paragraph summary of the storyline. Oh, I see. You start with one sentence and you go to one paragraph. Um, keep going, Mar. Thank you, Billy Boy. Two murderers trying to pin it on the other one is a fun idea. Sounds like your outlines need to be more outcome driven. A battle happens where X instead of I see. For me I have a scene by scene outline of things but then as I get to writing it feels like I end up not having enough material for that scene or it's not interesting enough. So it, it, it sounds like your mind is thinking I wrote that. We're done. Let's move on. Uh, okay Kimmy I wonder if the difficulty of outlining is related to the ADHD difficulty with a sense of time hard to plan the future when the future seems unreal that is really interesting I wonder how ADHD and Panthers versus an outline versus outliers I wonder how often that connects huh man y'all are teaching me more than I'm teaching you so um, Yeah, this was harder for me because suddenly I'm boiling it down to... I think what's getting me is telling... I'm telling the story over and over again from different points of view. I have to say everything I just said, but I have to say it with Maria as the focus. And then I gotta do it again with the others. Um... All right, so if you are an ADHD pantser, uh, you don't like to outline, and you have ADHD, and you feel comfortable, because I know there are people lurking who don't feel comfortable chatting, and that is totally cool. I'm very glad you're here. If you feel comfortable, and you have those two things, speak up, because I'm very interested to see what comes of this. Um, so one sentence summary of the character storyline. What happens? She arrives... 
is thrown into the lion's den again. Yeah. One sentence is very, very hard. I can, I can summarize a book in a sentence. I don't know if I can summarize a character story in a sentence. Oh, good. I'm glad you're learning a lot, Veil of Fights Cats. I'm, I'm, because I'm, I'm hitting a wall here. There's another one. Um, because see, I, I worked out everything else. I worked out, like, what she wants, what she needs, the conflict, the epiphany. OCD outliner plotter. That makes sense. So. Rambos, you could say why she specifically wants revenge without spilling six weights, spoiling six weights too much. Um. I'm going to call her a cast-off clone because she does look at herself as disposable. And that is a major part of her story. Cast-off clone seeks revenge but has to help Save, not solve, save. Clone kind with help of target. That's now what I'm trying to do here is there's a big piece of character development or character description in cast off clone because she knows she can't see herself as anything as a person who gets to live a life and that's hard to do so she has to kind of keep a hard look at that so that cast off clone is supposed to be describing her own view of herself um wait we got a never written mysteries but want mystery elements in my sci-fi fantasy so education when I do the Save the Cat Writes a Novel, I will be doing it with the um, Why Done It, as they call it, um, the Why Done It story beat usage. So I'll be focusing more on the mystery, and that might be even more interesting or more telling that this book is a complete failure. Who knows? Um, Whirling Nerd is ADHD. One time I won Nano because I outlined, but it was really hard, and I did not finish the book. Okay, Kimmy, I think that solve versus save is the key difference between adventure and a mystery. Hmm, that is a very good point. Solve. Of. Data corruption. A cast-off clone seeks revenge, but has to help solve mystery of data corruption with the help of Target. So that's their, her, her conflict's right there. Um, her motivation is... Let me see if I wrote down anything different real quick. Uh, motivation. Wow, this is a lot better than what I wrote. I said Maria is the protag driven by revenge. Uh, want motivation, revenge. Revenge. But, um, that's her motivation. How is motiva motivation and goal feel like the same thing? So I guess the goal is revenge. And motivation is what motivates you to get revenge. She's a tool who feels she has one use in life. Does that sound motivating? I'm not sure. I have covered up the chat with my notes. Sorry. I feel like the lack of solve is where they come up with the plot device of you did a thing and it got worse. 
Running excuses calls that the whole yes, but no and. Anger. Sense of justice motivates revenge. Yeah. Do our clones know that data corruption is intentional versus just a bug? I believe they think it's intentional because it's too... It's designed to get past all the safety measures on all the databases in the world. So it's... It's, it's got to be, um, manufactured. Um, she's a tool of justice. Tool of justice. Rar. Right. But. It's funny that, okay, this is where I think I inserted my own thing because I've read a lot of things that say you need to put what your character wants but what they need is often something else. That's not in here. There's motivation, goal, conflict, and epiphany. So I'm going to put what she needs because I already figured that out. A sense of self. Also in that... Um, it's hard to forgive somebody if you won't forgive yourself, and um, she actually has to try to learn to become human to cope with all the stuff going on. Um, <laughs> the automatic, did you know I, I write books and stuff, just popped up in the, in the chat, so I find that ironic. Because I'm clearly struggling here. Um, so conflict is... Has to ally with target for a larger goal. Whoa, you wrote, you write books? Who knew? Well, sometimes some random str watchers may find my stuff. Somebody who just found I should be writing may not know that I actually got some stuff published. And Maria continued. Epiphany. Um, what did I write? I first wrote, you have to forgive yourself first and then you can heal being... Because in clone time you can never be sure you remove somebody else. That's the key problem with revenge when you can clone people. You never know if there's a backup somebody, somewhere else and so can you ever really kill somebody? If they're cloned. Not everybody's cloned. Which is why forgiveness is kind of an important thing. I'm not saying the mass murderer deserves forgiveness. I'm just saying that in order not to be consumed with obsession, you gotta let stuff go. Because even if they do kill her, they know she's still on Earth. Are they gonna have to go after that one? Are they gonna just go after all the copies? Um, so... Epiphany Forgiveness makes us more human. Killing clones is hard. Also, killing clones is hard, yo. So, um, hey, that's showing up a little bit better, yay. So that is Maria's story in a nutshell. Um, a one paragraph summary of the storyline. Here's where I start to fall apart because I feel like I just wrote a paragraph of the storyline again. Um, so, but to do it this way, that is the next step. The next step is 
taking everything I just put in about Maria and then writing a full paragraph about her and then doing it for all the other characters. And in doing so, I hope to see the different ways they intersect. Because right here, all I'm saying is Maria and the killer intersect, but none of the other characters. And I think to have real character growth, we're going to have much more interactions between people. But how much do I put in an outline? So, um... It does point out that none of this is written in stone. Once you start getting into the story, you may realize that your first couple of comments were... Your first couple of ideas were not really working, so you go back and forth and back and forth. Like writing a book bio blurb for each character. Yeah, kind of. So, um... So now you have a good sense of the large scale of the novel. So here's where it kind of holds your hand a little bit more. You're supposed to, let's see. Right. So we go back to the summary paragraph. Summary paragraph, which was step two. And you're supposed to take a uh, right... Where are we? Right, you're supposed to expand each sentence into a paragraph. So as you can see, the snowflake gets more detailed and larger as you take these concepts and pull that into a paragraph. And then suddenly you have a much larger beat by, you know, three act beat of your book. And then, um... And then you're supposed to go back to the characters, write a one-page description of each major character and a half-page of every other important character. Uh, they should tell the story from the point of view of each character. So actually, I was kind of on the right path in doing the second... Um, in doing this for the other one of the other main characters because she's seeing it more as a murder mystery. And by doing so, you should see how they uh, intersect and deal with each other. And so now, step six, you take a week to expand the one-page one synopsis that we did early on. Well, that I pretended we did. Um, into a four-page synopsis. And because... Outlining makes me tired. Here's where it all falls apart for me. <laughs> it, 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 it more fell apart when I was looking at doing the big, pay, big character breakdowns of all the characters. But I have never, ever gone this far. Pantser, I lose interest. I, I think I keep feeling like writing the plot over and over again is, is getting me tired of it? I'm not sure. But, again, I'm not... I'm trying to show you how this works with one of my own projects and show you the ugly, ugly brainstorming session. I have been trying to outline more. So this is actually good for me. Um, I don't know if I'm going to keep going with this. I kind of want to, but I kind of am not f because I know I love the save the cat method. Um, I don't know if I want to continue with this one. Maybe I want to go to save the cat. I'm not sure. So, uh, so after you come into your four page synopsis, you've got Another, he, he, he says these by times. So like step one, your first sentence, you're supposed to give yourself an hour. So hour here, hour there. Now we're into days with the one page description of each major character. And then for a week, that takes your one page synopsis and takes it to a four page synopsis. 
Another week, expand your character descriptions into full-fledged character chart, detailing everything there is to know about each character. Birth date, description, history, motivation, goal, etc. More importantly, how will this character change by the end of the novel? An expansion of the earlier character work. So, yeah, that's... That is useful. It's... It's just hard... It's hard for me to come up with that stuff, but the times I've actually done the work to do it, it's been useful. Um... If you're a published novelist, then you write a proposal now and sell your novel before you write it. If you're not yet published, you need to write your entire novel first before you can sell it. No, that's not fair, but life isn't fair, and the world of fiction writing is especially unfair. Uh, you, step eight, you may or may not take a hiatus waiting for the book to sell or taking a break to... Uh, the things you do to make the traumatic first draft easier... Spreadsheets. Now he's bringing in spreadsheets, so... Now my brain is whirling, and I'm, I... I may go into the detailed character stuff, but I know... Well, spreadsheets, that's going into story grid territory, and that's where I'm gonna talk about that, so... He says there's like ten steps, but... I don't know. I, I start to feel like... By step eight, it's just do the thing you just did, but use different words over and over again. Because he's like, okay, so take the synopsis, make a list of the scenes, and put it in a spreadsheet. Step nine. Optional. He doesn't do this anymore. Switch back to word processor and begin writing a narrative description of the story. Take each line of the spreadsheet. Expand it to a multi-paragraph descri description of the scene. At this point, why not just write the scene? Sorry, I'm getting frustrated. 10. At this point, just sit down and start pounding out the first real draft of the novel. Just sit down. Just just sit down and do it, because it makes it sound easy. Oh, Lord. Sorry, I was getting frustrated there at the end. That's why I'm not an outliner. So, uh, catching up. Uh, maybe Lavender. Hey, welcome. Um, I like Save the Cat. I think whichever way you want to do it will be educational regardless. What is the Save the Cat method? I've heard of it, but unfamiliar. I'll get to that. Okay, Cunning. Um, I'm wondering if the outline I did was a combination of outlining preparedness and the strict crunch deadline of Nano. and didn't have time to get bored. Uh, uh, kid are writing, I think, to thinking of trying to plot embryo. Now that's what I haven't heard of. Okay, so uh, Save the Cat method. Save the Cat method, Blake Snyder took successful movies and I'm going to say box office successes not artistic successes not pushing the pushing the envelope of of what a movie is or what a story is it's the ones that made money and broke them all down I can't put that there that's in the camera broke them all down to uh, 21, 27, 20 some page, uh, 20 some beat story. And saw that almost every single one of them had the same basic beats at the same basic part of the movie. And the ones that didn't were the movies that say people said finished too quickly or dragged in the middle or whatever. So. He developed the Save the Cat method. The Save the Cat method is um, if you have a character who's unlikable, not necessarily a protagonist, or not necessarily an antagonist or a villain or somebody, but, you know, the, the grumpy next door neighbor who steals your paper. And you, the author, needs to show that the neighbor is not necessarily Satan. One of the. Uh, tried and true methods is called save the cat which is if there is something helpless in need that person will help them and that shows you something inside them that will hopefully be shown to be more through the movie so that's why it's called save the cat there are other things you can do to make a, a character a unlikable character likable and that is to show them loving somebody um, like a parent, uh, 
you know, show them actually maybe they're not showing your character love and affection. And I mean that broadly, like friend love and aff affection. But, you know, they, they're kind to their parents or they're kind to their sisters or they coach the little league team or something. And the other one is show them doing something really well. We like seeing, you know, we admire people who do things well. So even if you don't want to have lunch with them, you might want to go see them play piano. So those three rules are how to make a, a unlikable character likable. But save, that's what Save the Cat means. Fast forward. A lot of writers used the Save the Cat method, whether they were writing screenplays or not. But then a woman came around and took the Save the Cat method and applied it to novels and took the story beats and uh, said how to use them in different genres of novels. And then the amount of research and work she did to build this book is just amazing. She goes through, uh, she's got 10 genres, and she goes through each genre and lists a number of books that fit that genre, and a number of, uh, she takes one of the books and gives it a detailed plot breakdown based on the story beats. I've tried the snowflake method and I kind of, as you can see, I kind of fall apart in the middle. Um, I think it's because it does start small, but then it gets exponentially larger and it is overwhelming. So I like the Save the Cat method because it's just beat after beat after beat. And um, I'm going to have to revisit the book today. Um, if you weren't in my stream yesterday, I just basically said a lot of my plans this weekend kind of went out the window. Um... But things are improving now, so I'm a little behind in my research, but uh, Save the Cat Method is possibly my favorite. If you want to get the book, it's Save the Cat Writes a Novel by Jessica something. Um, let's see, I'm behind in chat. Uh... I think the goal is to get you to think and rethink the idea so that by the time you just sit down, oh yeah, I understand that. It's just like, when he says just sit down, it makes it sound like you haven't done a ton of work already. Just like, just show up. It's, it's, yeah. I understand the, the, the reasoning behind this method. It just makes me cranky. Uh. Christian writing, I feel the same way when I use Snowflake Method. I used it for my first nano, but I never got back to that story to fix it, really. Um, Urban Pope using the Snowflake Method, but we'll probably try a different strategy for my next project. Okay, Cunning, is the plot embryo basically the same thing as Dan Harmon's Story Circle, which is basically just Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey? Now, rewriting the same thing over and over again, and why not just write the scene was part of my problem with Story Genius. I have a friend who swears by Larry Brooks and his story engineering method. Wow, so many out there. The method is too formulaic for my taste, though. Um, I'm going to have to write these down. So we got... Um, actually, I'll write it down on a new page in case anybody else wants to see this. Uh, let's see. Story circle... Story engineering. Um, thank you. Thank you, Rambos. Save the Cat Writes a Novel by Jessica Brody. I always re Yeah. Um, was there another one? Plot Embryo? I, I, I can't endorse any of these. I'm not sure. I think I've heard of the story circle, but... Um, yeah. I will point out that Gail Carriger just wrote, um, I think it's, I think it'll be out soon, um, The Heroine's Journey, which is a more feminine look at the hero's journey, and not necessarily that women must do heroine's journey and men must do hero's journey, just it's a different storytelling method 
that's not the hero's journey by Campbell. So there have been a couple of people who've tried to point out that that's not always the way to structure stories. And um, this is something I'd love to study, that, that the hero's journey is a very Western idea, because there's, you know, Japanese... Uh, I'm speaking of Japanese because that's the most uh, Eastern stuff I've read uh, and watched. The the stories are used much different um, beats and, you know, yeah. So this, it's, story structure is not just universal. It's, it's the Joseph Campbell thing is very Western. Um, the story circle is really good for episodic stories. Interesting. Story genius. Okay, story genius. Ah, it's out October 1st, thank you. And, um, yeah. Alright, so here are four more ideas on top of the three that I'm going to be working through. Um, do you guys have any questions for now? I'm sorry this kind of fell apart, but we should have seen it coming considering how I'm, I've am i never actually finished a snowflake method. But someone asked what it was, so I wanted to take you through a snowflake method. That's right. I was going to read the the pantsless book. I bought it, but then didn't read it. What was that called? Somebody recommended it to me in the stream last Thursday. Um, I think it was super interesting. Thank you, Rambos. Thank you. Um, what did I get? I got... Take off your pants. Outline your books for faster better writer. So, yeah, I got that, and I got No Plot, No Problem, which I'm kind of in the middle of right now. So those are my approaching books from a pantser's point of view, even though I have a pantser's point of view. I want to see if other people can take the pantser's point of view and make it semi-structured? I don't know. But does anybody have any questions? Um, do you have a request of what to do next time? I will try to figure all of this out and make it a little bit better, clearer. I might switch the cameras so I won't look as clear, but this will. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I have going on. If you don't have any questions, um, this has been I Should Be Writing. And this is my special pre-episodic outline. Pre-episodic? What the hell does that mean? It's very warm in here. I was not prepared for how warm the streaming room gets with computers and lights and stuff. Hmm. <clears throat> this was the pre-NaNoWriMo look at outlining. Today I did the snowflake method until it fell apart. And uh, next time, do you have a request of next time? Uh, story Grid or Save the Cat. You know which one I prefer, but I'm going to cover them both, so it doesn't really matter to me which one we do. Actually, it does matter. I want to know so I can be prepared for it. So somebody speak up in chat and tell me what you want me to do next. But in the meantime, um, you can see this, this show live on Twitch Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1230. Uh, Twitch.tv slash I know you're watching me and you already know that, but if you're listening, you... Don't. Um, sorry. My, my mixer distracted me. And if you want to see my webpage, it's merverse.com. If you want to support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash mightymer. I opened a Jemmy account. I was not sure about it, but I decided to have it focus a little bit more on video and streaming. So you can support me monthly at Patreon, or you can ask for a one-time favor or something at jemmy, J-E-M-I dot app slash Mighty Mer, where you can uh, pick, the t pick the topic for I should be writing, pick the next game I play on my game streams, ask for a video pep talk where I will send you specifically a pep talk on, come on little writer, you can do it. And um, yeah, so that's, that's something new I'm trying out that doesn't quite fit the Patreon concept, but is something different. 
Um, and I have another show, Ditch Diggers, which uh, is not live, but I put it on Fridays at... Uh, Friday mornings usually is when it hits. So Save the Cat has been... Wait, we got Cat, Cat, Story Grid, Cat, Save the Cat. So I'm sorry, K. Kimmy. Next Tuesday, we'll be doing Story Grid. And Thursday, we'll be doing Save the Cat. So um, thank you all again for watching and hanging out and talking to me in the chat and being patient with the newbie streamer who's still trying to work some stuff out. Hopefully, I'll be better next time. But uh, take care, and you should be writing. <laughs>